what's up? What's going on? You already know Remo Marac out here. Nonetheless, man, I, you know I had to pull up, do what I do. Society X Hennessy event speaking panel. I had to come through. You know what I mean? We're gonna see some things. You know, see some people speak their thing. You know, you know the Ruby Spray is here. Whoa. Fit. 
And I'm here now, still, still with you guys and amongst this great panel of incredible men doing incredible things. Seth Ferg, I'm from Harlem, New York. Here? Yeah, there's a lot of us in the building. We never get a scream like that, ever. <laughs> that usually be Brooklyn or Queens. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I'm a Harlem, New York rapper, and um, I'm an artist of all mediums. I went to art and design high school. Facts. Yeah, you went to art and design too? Class of 98. Yeah, we went to art and design, graduated in 06. My uh, major was fine arts and fashion. So I always designed clothes. My father did the Bad Boy logo for Puff and did the Uptown Cast logo for Andre Harrell. So I always was into style. And um, music, I always listened to music as I grew up. And uh, we would get like a bunch of free CDs since he knew all of the guys in the industry. Um, so that's how I guess I got into music. And then I started battle rapping in Harlem. And um, I never thought that I would actually be a rapper. Like that was a lot to like kind of digest and just put in my mind like you're gonna be this huge rapper. But I always knew I was gonna be somebody special. And I guess I, I didn't put that in my mind that I was just gonna be a rapper because I'm not just a rapper. I'm also a designer. Like he said, I designed my own bicycle with uh, red line bikes. And um, I designed clothes. You know, I'm signed to Tiffany's for jewelry. Um, I work with Valentino. Uh, you know, the list goes on. Hennessy, shout out to Hennessy. What y'all drinking right now? <laughs> you know, um, and I just landed a new deal with Revlon, so, you know. I guess that's a typical Harlem Jiggy nigga shit. <laughs> but um, I just say that to say this, like never box yourself in. Um, I, like music was definitely, music saved my life because when I was growing up, there was no straight men in fashion. And it was hard for me to even see the vision so far out to where it's like it is now where it's a virtual Ablo ahead of like Louis Vuitton, and then have like a black woman that's like a part of LVMH family, which is Rihanna. You know, back then, it was none of that. You know, we used to like get into fights, we had skinny jeans on, and like we wore Margellas, and we like was called weirdos. Like we used to bring models from Soho to Harlem, and they thought that they was our, our friends, but they was our girlfriends. So like, I'm just here to represent for my generation. But let me, my shit is cutting out. <laughs> oh, yeah, the show. I'm here to, oh, there we go. I'm, I'm here to represent my generation of millennials that did it from my time. And um, yeah, I'm standing up for all of us, yeah. And like Nigel Sylvester, I grew up watching Dave Mera as well. Rest in peace to Dave Mera. He was like the best bike rider ever to do it. And um, we definitely got to stand up for mental health because mental wellness because Dave Merritt died of suicide. So, you know what I'm saying? Like bike riding and all of that kind of keeps kids' minds occupied and, and doing things for wellness. So shout out to Nigel Sylvester for taking that thing to another level and being a bike rider of this today's era. Yeah. What's going on? I'm Wisby. Hey. least confident uh, in being on a microphone and in public. <laughs> so I'm just gonna get that out of the way. Start low, work our way up. <laughs> um, it's an honor to be up here, uh, honestly. Uh, you can turn the volume up, great. Um, yeah, so I was, I was born in the city. I grew up in Westchester. And uh, to be honest, like, I didn't have a, uh, I had a good family um, growing up, but I grew up as a troubled kid, and so, um, in school, the only thing that kind of kept, I didn't have an assigned seat in class, so the only thing that kept me grounded was sitting on the windowsill and drawing. And so as I grew up, I connected with the arts. It was, it was what calmed me down, it was what I connected to. And it was kind of like, it was kind of my escape. It was my identity because I, I found myself lost. I just couldn't fit in as a kid. And, uh, you know, I, I took arts classes and photography and I went to camps and I learned sculpture and I learned black and white photography with film. I don't know if you guys with the digital cameras know about that. Um, just kidding. <laughs> Ice break. Um, 
and uh, you know, I just I really identified with with that that creative outlet. But like being a kid, not having guidance, I didn't know what that meant. And like going up to school, you know, when I graduated, it's kind of like, what does being an artist even mean? You know, it's like, what what is what does that mean? And I was kind of taught in school, if you can't paint or draw what you see, you're not a good artist. And so like. I can't look at somebody, I can't, I can't paint, I can't draw exactly as they are. And so I was kind of like deterred or discouraged from, from what I was doing. And so I kind of went down like a dark path. When I went to college, I dropped out. You know, I didn't have this like path of success. I didn't like go to school and they're like, that's a prodigy right there. He's, he knows what he's doing. He knows what's going on. I was kind of like lost trying to figure things out. And actually, I didn't pick up a paintbrush. I didn't do anything creative for five years. But I was always kind of like lingering in the back of my head. And um, never forget, uh, my mother, who's played a big role in my life, she suggested that I go back to school, and I took a couple classes, and, and I reconnected it. Like, it, it, it opened up the floodgates in my brain, and it reconnected me with that passion. That passion that a few years later, as more of an adult, I understood what that meant. Basement. We had to go to the Jewish guys to, to get, like, screen printed materials and stuff, and paint. So it was like... This was his community, and I grew up seeing him reach out to all of these different people to create a product. Um, so I was always taught like passion and business was connected in that way. I didn't know passion without business. Like passion without business almost didn't make sense to me, and it's still kind of dumb. Like, um, but like I said, you know, growing up, I would see my dad with the, the business ventures. And my first business venture was like making t-shirts. So I would like get t-shirts and like, or have people bring t-shirts to school and I'll paint on the t-shirts for like $30. And then I started charging $60. And then I started charging like $100. And then I'm like, hold up, I need to learn how to sew so I could charge $200. And add materials and stuff. So that's when I started developing myself as a fashion designer and um, got into like materials and things like um, that. Being an artist is a great gift. What is like some of the messages that you want to show out there to the world with your art? I mean, a lot of the messages that I speak are from personal experiences and, and one big message from myself is like, just be true to yourself and speak your messages. And like, a big issue these days is, is it's kind of hard being an artist and, and, and like I want to put myself out there as much as possible but at the same time I put myself out there as much as possible and I become vulnerable. So I kind of go in between this this personal battle and um, you know at the end of the day it's like stick to my truth, stick to my path and, and, and like it doesn't matter, like I could never be wrong if I tell my story. I can tell anybody else's story but my own, I can't tell anybody else's thoughts but my own and if that's the case then like and if I'm honest with myself then, then that's how I can get across the messages and not wonder if I did the right or wrong thing because I know that at the end of the day, it was what was true to me. And um, this is our last question for the evening. I'll answer it um, in a short answer. If y'all could each tell the younger, the younger self like what you would do different on this journey, like what would you tell the young Nigel, the young JJ, the young Ferg? What would, what would that advice that you would give yourself if you could look back at time? Uh, don't be discouraged. That's it. Like, a lot of the times you hear about, like, don't stop hustling, don't stop working, and that's a huge part of it. But, like, don't be discouraged. Like, listen to yourself, listen to that gut intuition, because that's something that you have and nobody else has. And I wish I had somebody to tell that to me, because what I was told should be right and wrong isn't actually what's right and wrong because the people, if you take your own path, you create your own journey. So just like, don't be discouraged with what you're doing. And if it doesn't work, well then maybe that's that's not supposed to be your path and you will find it eventually. I would, I would tell myself, continue to be brave, continue to uh, trailblaze, continue to uh, know yourself, know what your capabilities are, uh, continue to read, continue to program yourself and condition yourself for the success you want. That's what I would tell myself. Now, I definitely want to just piggyback on what these guys said, same as I then, it's like feed your brain, continue to believe in yourself, like 
always follow your gut. That's the thing I do every day now. I follow my gut no matter what's going on around me. So just continue to keep your head up, you know what I mean? Uh, I'd say patience, patience, patience. And you know, listen listen to listen to the elders. They've been here, they've done it. They're trying to they're trying to school you so you'll be bigger and better. Alright, let's take a round of applause for everybody on the stage. That's the end of our panel discussion. Uh, we'd like to thank Jacqueline and the Great Society X and everybody that came out this evening. And um, let's get together for a picture with um, do that to make sure those flashes ain't too crazy. <laughs> This is why I like doing these type of things because we get to show lifestyle, we get to show the bicycles, we get to show the artwork, we get to show the culinary arts. This is what life is about. It's about the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? I want to thank Jacqueline again. I want to thank Hennessy for providing the drinks. You know what I'm saying? Um, we got some other songs to get into. Let's get into that shit. All the females going crazy today. We ain't gonna blow, we ain't gonna blow. We ain't gonna blow, we ain't gonna blow. We ain't gonna blow, we ain't gonna blow. We ain't gonna put the we ain't gonna blow. We ain't gonna blow, 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 we ain't gonna blow. I gotta turn the like a champ, hang with nothing but winners. We ain't gonna blow ahead of picking the finish. All my bitches that are dead, then it's a minute. I got E minor rally turning up on the sprinter. This the first time I saw that she got booty and dinner. Hooked it like a bartender turn into the stripper. Hooked it like a bartender turn into the stripper. Hooked it like a bartender turn into the stripper. Go to the man that walks me to the. I might pull up in the lane. Oh, 
on God. Now ain't nobody drilling in it. Go anywhere around the way, nobody ain't really did. Quick dancing, six dancing, uh. Pray for it and the shit happen, uh. Left Prada with tip jackets, uh. This salad and a bitch matching, uh. I've been ballin', this is just practice, uh. Blow 20, sorry, Miss Jackson, uh. Went west and I went platinum, oh God. Clap with my bro IG. Put you niggas in the pit like the Yoda and B. I became everything I was chosen to be. How about the dinner party with a hover and B? Cause I'm busting through the door like a hover with these. And now my whole family be rolling with me. And my boss, my account, little brother got talent. And my uncle T for her head of security. Tune in to Ream TV. You already know what it is. You know what's up. Out chill.